This is part two of our series of videos we are taping here at the headquarters of Panerai. Enjoy. Before starting episode number two, let's quickly look back. In episode number one, we showed you how cases and movements are manufactured. I'm very happy you are here because yeah. you can film everywhere you want to go. Yeah. As we have said to many other, Panerai is a welcoming center here to show that Panerai is a true story. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So the next prominent guide here at Panerai is with me is Frédéric Rondeau. Hello. Good to have you, Fred. Thank you. Um, he's working for 18 years at Panerai. Absolutely. And I just learned that you are in charge of movement manufacturing, movement development. Absolutely. And you were among those who developed the very, very first Panerai movement. Yeah, well, first in-house movement, absolutely, yes. So, Fred, now we are in the laboratory. Absolutely. Testing is something that is necessary because yes. you, you assume to produce a certain quality, but then you have to prove. Absolutely. Well, there's two things that we have to prove. First, that the movement is reliable and, of course, the case. So, the first thing that we have to do here, so the watchmakers are going to assembly the prototypes of the future movements and they are going to verify if um, they work and if they are ready to pass all the tests that are necessary for um, a watch to be worn by a customer. Okay. And same for a case. And you have uh, developed kind of uh, uh, incredible torture. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. I was, I, was, I was shocked to see what these poor movements have to pass through when I saw it first. Exactly. And we will discover this together. But we will also talk about cases. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we decided to do is to introduce you something interesting. You might be uh, discussing this about uh, water resistance of the Lumino 2 cases. And I will randomly choose, coming from the production, one of the cases and we will test it at another level than 30 meters. Exactly. So we will push the limits a little bit. Exactly. We're going to test a case. Instead of 30 meters, we're going to try with 200 meters. 200 meters. So what will happen? It will be announced that the Lumino Due cases will be waterproof up to 50 meters. But it is only a number written on it. As you just heard, they testing it at 200 meters. So it is also possible that the Lumino Due in a couple of years from now, when they do an announcement, could be water resistant even more. Okay. And other Panerai watches being pushed further instead of 300, 600 meters or 200, and whatsoever. But I'm, I'm curious to see that. Let's go. So I have uh, two trays with uh, ready manufactured Lumino Due cases. And um, I have no idea which watch is uh, yeah, doing what. So I randomly, I will just show you. Look, this is uh, the Lumino Due, ready uh, to be sold. Uh, they didn't allow me to test it on gold watches. They said, okay, mm -hmm, let's, uh, let's take a steel one um, for the test. Just in case something happens, we won't know. And I will randomly choose one. So um, you have any idea which one would you have been choosing? Um, shall we? Which one do you want? Shall we take this one? Yep. Okay. Let's take uh, the one here. So please, uh, Fred, take this one. Perfect. And it is the watch. Can we just show it in the camera? Yes. Protection. It really comes from the department where they completely assembled exactly. the watch. Still imprinted, being waterproof only 30 meters. But they take critics seriously at Panerai and they said to themselves, OK, we know that we manufacture our cases with lots of security. Absolutely. And so you have been testing them and all of a sudden it turned uh, to be the fact that these cases are almost waterproof 200 meters. Or they are. That's what we want to try today. And well, 
history between Panera and waterproofness is related. Okay. So we want to guarantee that all watch is waterproofness and what we have written on our watch is guaranteed. So the 30 meters, it's what we are sure they can go, but they can definitely go further away. Okay. And so as you can see, the watch is, well, under the water. We're gonna seal the container and we're gonna push the pressure inside the container with 20 bars, so 200 meters simulation of pressure. Well, the test takes 10 minutes to go. So we're gonna start it and we'll come just after to see the results. Yeah, Fred, <laughs> what we see here is really uh, something <laughs> I was very much astonished to, to see such a density of uh, torturing tests. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> we are aging all the movements. So this is a sample of different movements that we are aging right now. So there's different aging process winding process, so that's winding like manual winding or automatic winding. There's also some aging about the date change. We are simulating 10 years of use, intensive use. 10 years? 10 years of intensive use for all the prototypes that we want to release in, in the future years. And now we've got some samples of the movement that have already passed this test. Even the autologie is tested, so every single new movement are tested and tortured like that. How long does it take to test 10 years? It takes, well, two days. Two days? Yes. Wow, that's really intense. And then once the tests are done, you are dismantling the movement and really verifying? Absolutely. We have to, well, disassemble the movement and check that some parts age prematurely or not. And if it's the case, we have to, uh, well, improve it. Yeah. Are you from time to time also taking out of the serial production a movement and test it here? No, it's only for prototypes here. It's only for prototypes. Exactly, this is a standard procedure for well, pre-production. And as soon as we, we guarantee this aging on a, a good amount of movement for the prototype, we are ready to well, launch a production and we don't want to age a movement or a watch for the future customer. So the customer will have a brand new movement yeah. which is not aged, of course. But you're not by randomly taking out and rechecking from time to time? Ah, yes, it depends on the product, but it could be one time a year or one time every two years. We're gonna, well, take some samples yeah. in the production and we're going to verify if the production process and if the movement and the assembly didn't change anything on the final quality. So next here, Fred, is let's say phase 2.0 of testing the winding rotor. Exactly. So, um, can you open up so we can? Absolutely. We are aging the automatic system in this machine. And as you can see, the whole movement is turning and the oscillating white. So, the white is trying to always, well, fix the ground by gravity. And this is another method or way to uh, verify that our automatic system is reliable. That's incredible. You hear the machine beeping, the machine that has been testing uh, our little baby here, and oh my goodness, no, it didn't break, I can tell you. <laughs> it says here, cycle terminé, okay. That uh, says in French, the cycle is um, done and the watch seems to be okay. And if I look in here, my uh, looks uh, as uh, it looked before when we put it in here uh, under pressure of 20 bars. And uh, imagine or, or think again, uh, they officially write 30 meters, but it withstands 20 bars, that's equal to 200 meters. So yeah, let's take it out, please. Real water, real testing. Fred, exactly. what do you say? Is uh, our doer still looking good? Exactly, I still turning. We can see the small second turning. Yes, impressive. Okay, let's take the watch out, we have to see it. We took it out from the water and you will be uh, witnessing um, a randomly chosen uh, waterproofness test, a water tightness test uh, we just did. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I was really randomly choosing out of the production, and uh, no one told me which one to pick, and uh, yeah, it is here. So mm -hmm. impressive. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> impressive. So you should change those 30 meters on the back. Well, it's the idea. Well, we are, of course, we want to be sure that all of production is, well, we guarantee this well, waterproofness. So before changing yeah. your engraving, we want to test more. Yeah, yeah, okay. And with the lever open also. And with, ooh, yeah, we have to say that, yeah. The security. Yeah, the security is, uh, the original security is open. It was open during the test. So, and uh, to be really sure, if there is no water or humidity in the case, uh, now what next is we are going to heat it up here. 65.3 um, uh, grade centigrade, or, or centigrade is not Fahrenheit, it's centigrade, 65.1. The watch case will be heated up for about 10, 15 minutes. And what will be done afterwards is they will drop some cold water on, on the sapphire crystal. Any case, if there is any humidity in there, there will be fog visible fog and this is the ultimate proof very um, let's say um, conservative way of doing it but it's the ultimate proof to um, have the guarantee um, if there is any humidity or if anything happened during that 200 meter water testing so I will put it in there and with 65.3 degrees centigrade we will wait a while and then drop some water on it and see what happens So I'm lifting here the cover and the watch head meanwhile has been uh, warmed up to some 42 degrees and we will show you this. And what will happen now is that this is water, plain water, cold water and um, some drops will be um, put on the outside of the glass and if if, if there would be any humidity in there, we would have seen fog. The development on fog on the inner side, but there is none. And it's just to prove that the case is absolutely... I will now... Oh, wow, it's hot. Oh, hurry up. Jorge, we feel me. <laughs> it's 40 degrees. No, it's okay. It's really 42 degrees. And yeah, you don't see anything. Um, by dropping cold water, it will automatically have created what we call the development of fog. And you would have seen it on the inner side of the sapphire crystal, but there is none. And yeah, I randomly have been choosing out of the two days production here at Panerai Neuchâtel, one of the Lumino Due cases. And uh, yeah, I asked them to do the test and there we go. Another department, another type of testing. Mm -hmm. And what I see in here is kind of a chamber yes. where you simulate heat and humidity. Exactly. It's, uh, it's a oven, basically. We, put, uh, we can test the movement with, uh, with the influence of temperature and of movement, or we can test the case with the influence of temperature and humidity. So we can push the humidity to 90%, or we can push the temperature and we can, well, see what are the consequences on the watch or on the movement. On the other machine, we can yeah, add some saltiness, yeah. like salty environments, yeah. and like this, we can verify that, well, next to the sea or on your boat, you can still use your watch. One week uh, for temperature and humidity, and one week well, also for uh, the salty environment. And this is uh, about how many years of wearing? Oof. Well, it depends who the customer is. Uh, depends <laughs> on the customer, yeah. Silly question from my side, of course. If he isn't living beside the sea, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this famous uh, mouton bandule, as they call it, is one of the most uh, yeah, horrifying tests. Uh, every time I see this little um, hammer here, I say to myself, this is really something they shouldn't do with a watch because it's 5,000 G. So you're accelerating to the top here, then you leave uh, and then a watch that is being positioned here is going to be kicked out at 5000 G and, and then it will land in here and is being tested. And this is something really crazy. It's 5000 G, imagine. And the watches in the phase of construction and before going into the manufacturing process are really tested here. But it's not only this, there are other shocks. It's not only one extreme shock that can 
ha that can happen when you're wearing a watch. You, for instance, wear the watch when you're on a mountain bike and you go downhill, and there's a machine here testing um, average shocks with some, what is it here, Fred? Well, this is like, Small shocks. So Small shocks compared to those. Yeah, this is 25 Gs. 25 Gs? Yeah, it's 3,000 shocks. 3,000 shocks. And in each position, 3,000 times 6 for each movement. And this is uh, equivalent to shocks you have, I don't know, when you're riding a motorbike or a mountain bike or you're doing, or you're, I don't know, slamming on a table because you're angry. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Things that happen in normal life and they are tested. So now I'm excited because Fred just told me what I have to do with uh, this nice eight days movement. Um, yeah, watch head. Um, we are simulating here a drop from one meter on a wooden floor. That's something that can happen on a daily basis. So you are handling, um, not correctly handling your watch and it will drop on the floor. And you see, so the small second hand is uh, swiping over the dial. And I will position it uh, like this. It's okay, Fred. Whoa. Oh Thank well, you. you've done it. Whoa. Oh Thank well, you. you've done it. Whoa. Oh Thank well, you. you've done it. Hello? What? Whoa. Alexandre uh, has uh, made one of our test watch falling down, but it's no problem. It has probably not broken because Panerai is a survival instrument for modern hero, and Alexandre is a modern hero. Well, oh well, you. you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, still this is working. <laughs> still working, my goodness. I wouldn't be the, the best tester here. <laughs> But you see, it's still working, my goodness. Okay, please teach me how to put that watch. You can clearly see the small second hand positioned at nine o'clock turning, and now I will do the test as they told me to do it. So the watch is positioned, I have to close. And there is a green button I have to press and then watch, it will drop. Okay. There it is, and yeah, clearly, clearly visible, working. Even it already passed its second test, the one that shouldn't have been done. <laughs> I was just um, not able to position the watch correctly, but it passed all the two tests, no doubt. You can see the central, uh, the small second hand, nine o'clock joining, and yes. And by the way, this is a watch that is uh, in this little test machine for a longer time already. And uh, if there are uh, groups visiting like we do today, um, they always show this uh, torture and the watch uh, is able to take more um, of shocks than two per day. So sometimes it is being tested a couple, couple of times per day. Don't miss any of our videos that will go online in the next days and weeks.